we call this thing a, a glass buster right here, but you know, something that just come across the line. I mean, unless you're sitting out in a car in the middle of the woods, you're not going to be breaking any glass with this. However, if you come across a coconut tree in the woods somewhere, <laughs> BAM! Now you got your coconut milk oh and my you God. got it busted open. Woo. I mean, it don't get no better than that, folks. Yep. Saw teeth on the bottom, and a 
and a regular axe blade on the bottom. And if you flip this over and screw it into the bottom part of the handle, you got a handle. You got actually a handle, so now it actually is a functional knife. And all this stuff goes together. This all goes together. I mean, so I'm gonna show you. So this is so this is the knife part. And it is a, I mean, it comes with a fairly, you know, uh, sharp blade. It's not like super duper sharp because I'm wondering if you'd want a really super duper sharp one with it being right here by the flashlight parts, but it will cut. So, all right, so a piece of paper. Now, like I said, it's not, it's not paper, you know, sharp like that, but it will cut once you've gone through the paper. So it is a, it's not like a, Super creeper sharp knife, but for what its purpose is, it will do yes. its job. Because, um, and I'm going to show you. I'm going to tell you something about this a little bit later. Because I have a new classification for these uh, flashlights that are out there, and we're going to put them into the Walking Dead test. Yeah, yeah. All right. So this is the only one I can actually think of that would actually survive the Walking Dead. Um, so you notice they got like what, eight seasons now, something ten like, seasons, something like, like that. Ten, actually. Well, the funny thing is, they're still using flashlights. Yep. And the last time I checked, uh, unless they have some awesome lithium-ion ion batteries that run for forever, uh, they ain't gonna have no flashlights anymore. All right. So let me put this down into its its uh, collapsed portion here, so I'll show you what it looks like all together. And Ryan made an observation about this that it reminded him of the old mag lights. The big, yeah. The big, uh, yeah, the big cop lights. 4D, 4D uh, mag lights. That's, that's what I call them. Right. So the cop lights. You take the, the, the tail cap off, and you'll notice it still has the, still has the lighter underneath it. Yep. So this still my on, favorite part. This is over here. here. It's all aluminum. So. It is, even though it's big, it's still relatively light. And that was the other comment, one of the comments we had on here is that, uh, why would you want to carry this giant flashlight when you, you know, because it's so heavy when you can just carry all those other pieces? So we're gonna do a test about, about the weight of this whole thing versus if you had each individual piece, how much would it weigh in your pack? Now, the only thing I can say about that is, this is quite lengthy. So inside of a backpack, you know, it might, Take some maneuvering to get this in there. And my only critique about this whole thing is this little uh, pocket clip. It's not really, once you put this on there, it's not really in a good spot. It really needs to be more in the center. So maybe move it up here into the you know, knife portion. Or yeah, like maybe, that. maybe like right here or on this it, side. Maybe where you can move it. So that because if you put this together and make the handle of the knife, you wouldn't want that clip on the handle. Right. Put it right there, you have halfway up. Our so side. you make it a movable clip where you can actually take it off and move it there. That's just, you know, I'm not an engineer, just a suggestion from you know being a usable standpoint. Right. Alright, so this is what it looks like fully assembled. You know, it's still got the same bright light, and this is right out of the box. I ain't charged us a single bit. You saw me open up the thing. And if you look on the front right here, you see the three dots. Alright, this means the battery is fully charged. If it's you know, and as it goes down, then one of these little blue dots is going to disappear as it goes down. Still got your low, and it's got your strobe. And then if you hit it three times real fast, it puts on an SOS. Right, so I don't think I showed you guys the SOS last time, but you know, that's that's that. All right, so it also comes with a, a head, so you can plug in at a cord, so you can plug in the wall, and it uses USB. The, the macro USB in here. So it's also so it goes to micro USB to the side so right yep, here, right, right, right here on the side. Right. But if you notice, it also has a USB port on it where you can plug your cell phone USB into here and charge your cell phone from this. I demonstrated that on the last video, which is, which is why, which is why we wanted to put it through the walking dead test. Right. So here again. Uh, and I, I have to give them some kudos. They had to use no cell phones because all the towers were dead. Right. But they can still use it for other things like uh, they can play games, the kids can play games, things like that. Just little things like that, but it's going to be a point where they're no longer being able to charge. Now, I know they live in that one little spot where they had solar panels and all that jazz. Yeah. Great, wonderful. But my point is, all these lights, and I'm going to start running everything through the 
you want from the dead test to see would this survive the in an apocalypse, in a zombie apocalypse. And I'm gonna go with, yeah. I mean, worst case, if you ran out, you know, you could beat one to death with this thing. I mean, it's, it's still pretty stout. It's got qualities of that old backlight. Oh, yeah, you know, that's sure, really it's a big uh, 4D backlight. I mean, you could whack somebody that, with this thing. That was the first thing Savannah said. You know, was that it reminded her of the big Mac lights yep. that the, the officers you know, used to use. And it's, I mean, it's got, it's very robust. It's got some good curve to it. It doesn't feel chintzy, it doesn't feel cheap. It was still got a focusable lens, all that stuff. All right, so now what I promised you is I'm going to put this through a weight test. So I'm going to have, we're going to stop the video now. I'm going to go get all the things assembled and we're going to kick this thing into high gear. All right, so what I have here, I've got a flashlight that has a changeable uh, lens by pushing the button. You would zoom in and out on it. It's got a battery installed. So put that on there. That's 777. Seven. Alright, so lighter. Now, this one has an infinite source lighter. So I use one that has the biggest tank I could find lighter wise to be a barbecue lighter, which is what you'd have to have in order to have the same capacity at, or multiple lighters, which I deem to be about the same. So now we're up to 9.6. You have a knife, a multifunction knife. So this knife has a saw and a blade, and it requires you know, it all in one thing. So we'll set that guy on there. At 13 ounces. We have a uh, one of those uh, rechargeable pa battery packs. All right, so put that guy on there. And then we have a thing that you have to charge the battery up with that you plug into a wall because for, none of these, none for of the these, flashlight. right? For, well, either one. This thing doesn't charge by itself, so it has to have some method of charging. There's so no solar on it, so it has to be plugged into something to charge it up. Right. So you're going to need that overall. All right. So if you look at this. The weight on this is, you see it? 1.08 1. 1. ounces. So one, one pound, pound, eight ounces. All right, so now, take all this mess off. And we put the flashlight on. And we're at one pound, 0. 0.4 ounces. So all of this is lighter than all of that. And this also has the SIG belt cutter, that package did not. This has a solar panel on it to charge this. So this solar panel represents the combination of these two pieces right here, all right? Because you have to have a way to charge this up and you have to have a way to charge the battery up. And all, both of those require you to plug it into an electrical outlet. That's right. So what if you didn't have one? Oh, well, I got a generator. Okay, great. Well, you're still gonna have to do that, all right? This light has a, a constant, running uh, power source of fire. Now, eventually, I guess, if you held a button down long enough and you want to start enough fires, it could, but the, day, the great thing is the next day, the sun's going to charge the battery up again and we'll rock and roll them because it is a lithium ion battery. And in the case of, let's say, let's add the plug-in core to it. So you say you had to plug it in. All right, so we're only one ounce more than all of that. And you got all that other stuff on there, and it's all in one particular one package. So you tell me which way would you go? I'm going to go with the complete package. If it was me, not because not because I'm trying to promote a product, or not because I'm trying to help Lou sell any more flashlights. I'm just going flat out on the what it does and how it works. And what it does is beyond any other thing that I've seen on any other flashlight out there. So right. that's just my that's my and two cents on it. Here, here, here's here's another benefit to it. Everything's all in one right here, so you only have to hook it onto your belt right here. All this stuff over here, you have to have multiple pockets to put all this stuff in. And if you if you're limited on pockets, you might not have enough room for that knife right there, or that lighter, or that flashlight, or the chargers, anything like that. Where all this is an all in one. You got, I mean, it's there. I don't know if you can see this, this sits in my, in my pocket, it's sitting right in my pocket. It's not flopping around, it's not going anywhere. If I pull on it, it's not going to fall out. You know? So it will fit in your pocket. So you can tote this on your side. It has a wrist strap on it, so if you wanted to tote it on your wrist, so you'd have it always at the ready. You could put your little hand through here, and well, my big fat hand through here. And now it's on a lanyard that's got a tight a, a toggle, toggle on it so you can tighten this up. If 
need be. I think Ryan demonstrated this last time. Yep. He's got big hands like me. All right, so there it is. You know, I've got it all at the ready all the time. So walking around now, you may say, oh, well, that'd be a pain in the neck walking around like that all the time. I agree. You know, I don't, I wouldn't carry it like that. But when you're using but, it, it's good to, it's good to have that on there. That way, it is a feature, right? But it also has a thing that you can get that gone right away. So you push this little clip in. I didn't show this on the last one. And now this is out of the way. So now it's not being caught up on anything. Alright, so it does have a quick detach, and if you wanted to take this completely off, it's just a little string that moves through your tail cap, comes right off. So, once again, I find no fault in this flashlight whatsoever. I cannot see one single negative thing to it. Um, I have and I told you before, I own a ton of flashlights. I own flashlights. I've got the Bell Pop one. I've got ones from Nightcore. I've got one, two, I've got four different flashlights that I use for hunting. I got one that gives me a good green light for going into the woods. I got one that gives me a good red light for going into the woods. I got one that got a nice bright white light for going into the woods. Plus, and I got another one that has a blue light on it, so I can find blood. So I carry four different flashlights. Because I can't find any particular one that does that function as well. Now, how big of a pain in the neck do you think that is on my hunting pack where I gotta carry all these? Because I can't rely on any of one of them to do multiple functions. That's how I found you know, this right here, but that's neither here nor there. This is not a this is not a thing. I'm talking about this flashlight here. This one does everything I need. Right. I mean, granted, it does not show green LED. And it doesn't show a red LED because that's not its function. It's not a hunting flashlight. It's not labeled as a hunting flashlight. It's an outdoor it's flashlight. For, it is designed for survival. Right. right. That's survival. why. That's why it's got the knife in it. That's why it's got this razor blade right, right here. That's why it has the fire starter. You know, the solar to recharge the battery that's here. Because if you're out in the woods and you know you're not going to have a plug in in a tree somewhere that you can just go <laughs> plug this thing up and say, so let me charge my flashlight back up. No, you got to find a spot, you know, where sun rays are shining down and let this thing do its job, you know? I mean, it, it has its function. It is designed for a survival flashlight. So if you're trying to classify it into the classification of a hunting flashlight, you are shopping in the wrong right, department because exactly. that's not what it is. So we have to use it for what it's designed for. And if you use it for what it's designed for, just like any other thing, when you design it for something and you try to use it for another function, it doesn't usually work out so well. So, like I said, I wouldn't carry this if I was going hunting because it only has a white light. And white lights your deer off. And we are deer hunters. So we would yeah. use a white light. I would have another specialty flashlight for that function. But if I was in a survival situation where it was between me and my my uh, my uh, everyday carry bag or my get home uh, get home bag, I'm not gonna carry a green and a red flashlight. I'm gonna have a nice bright white flashlight so I can see where the heck I'm going in the inclement weather. And then, you know, we call this thing a, a glass buster right here, but you know, something that just come across the line. I mean, unless you're sitting out in a car in the middle of the woods, you're not gonna be breaking any glass with this. However, if you come across a coconut tree in the woods somewhere, <laughs> BAM! Now you got your coconut milk, oh and my you got God. busted open. Woo. I mean, it don't get no better than that, folks. We've been watching the loss. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but the thing about it is, is this not only can it get you out of your car, but what if you need to find some shelter? Right. And there was a bunch of cars over there all locked. Yeah. I'm yeah. in. I'm inside. I got. I'm out of the weather. Yeah, the window's busted, but I can put up a tarp or something on to cover that up. There's a workaround for that. Versus you have to take something else and try to, if you ever try to break tempered glass, surprising love, this does it very well. Versus yeah. hitting it with a hammer, not so much. All right, so I don't know why, it's just the way the glass was designed. So, with that, I have one more thing I want to show you, and that's because I last time I did the fire test thing, I used a leaf that was wet. This time I'm going to take it and we're going to actually light it because we just had a pretty decent rain out here yesterday. Yeah. So the ground is wet, all the pine needles are wet, everything's wet. And I'm going to, we're going to actually go start a fire with nothing more than the little arc on this flashlight. All right, so let's go outside. All right, so let's gather some material. So over here I've gathered some, some pine limbs. I just grabbed them. And pine is a great limb to use for fire, starting fires because it is extremely flammable. Even in wet conditions, it will light very easily because of the 
car and the, you know, the resident side of it. All right, now, pine straw, also a great one. So when we were in the Marines, they told us this is how you make a bird nest. You take a bunch of pine straw together, you bond it all together and you create you a nest. And then you would you know, use your bow and make your little tinder and you put that little tinder in there and you blow up and make your thing and then you put it in your fire. Well, I ain't got that kind of time, you know, not to mention I have to go make a bow and a stick and all that jazz. It, I'm not going through all that. Now. All right, so we'll come down here and I want to show you. This is wet over here. This is wet, but I'm going to pull, pull these needles right here by the pond. And I didn't have a chance to really get real uh, dry because they're right here by the pond edge when it rains. And you notice this is all downhill, so all the water runs right here. So these, these are damp. Now, obviously, you wouldn't go grab a chunk of leaves out of the pond in the first place because no logical person would do that to try and light a fire. But I'm going to use these these ones that are somewhat wet. I'm going to set them underneath my sticks. Here, I'm going to put my smaller sticks on top. and stuff on here to keep the fire going. Of course, it's going to make a fool of me because he's like, like I told you, these pine needles are wet. Ooh, that's hot. There we go. Voila. And now I'm gonna go try and find a little bit drier tinder before my fire goes out. Grab some more pine straw, which is not extremely dry, but we're gonna get it anyway, and I'm gonna lay that right on top of here. So none of this stuff, if you noticed, it was pre, you know, pre-gathered. Everything was gathered. Even the sticks, I gathered them on the way down. I just, there was some, you got a lot of pine trees here in North Carolina. I just grabbed some pine limbs on the way down. And bada bing, bada boom, and we're there. I've got a fire, and now as long as I continue to keep feeding this fire, this fire is gonna continue to burn. So, all with that little arc. Yeah, it did take me a little bit of time, but let's look at it in this manner. In a, and I, I may try this one day when we're having a storm, come out here and actually start a fire in a rainstorm with this. To show you, you couldn't light a lighter in a rainstorm. Yeah, I seriously. Care, I don't care how hard you try, it ain't gonna do. So that's a testament to the quality of this light and the light that uh, Lou has provided. He has uh, done a wonderful thing to make a product that would be all encompassing for your survival. He has a that in mind, you know, the mind of a survivalist to think of the greatest thing that you could need to be a survivalist. So I want to thank Lou at Lone Survivalist again for allowing us to be to review this product, and uh, really want to appreciate it. A light. Oh well, we're gonna we're gonna do a, a, a shiny a light shine again. We did that on the last one, but I don't know how well it came out. I don't think it came out real well. So we're, when the uh, the sun's starting to dip down, so we're going to show you how far this light will shoot. And you'll be surprised at how the, the length of this, and you won't say anymore, well, it's just a flashlight. It doesn't really have a lot of uh, power to it because it does put out a light pretty far. And you can find your way through a situation, even through a inclement weather situation, to find your way home. So let's uh, put a pause on it right now until it gets dark, and then we'll get back to you. All right, folks, so you can see it's really dark out here. So we're gonna show you how good this flashlight works. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start off with the, with the not zoom light lens in. 
and uh, then I'll zoom it out so I'll show you how far it goes. But when it's all the way in, it gives you a real nice wide picture. So you can see a lot of picture out here. I mean, you can see it lights up almost the whole entire yard. I'd probably say the span of this is probably uh, 35, 50 feet wide. Mm -hmm. So a lot of scene, a lot of, a lot of vision here. All right. So now you can. It has adjustable zoom. So as you start pulling it in, the light becomes more concentrated and begins to extend. And up close, I don't know if you can pick that up in the picture, but there's a big X right in the middle. That's the the LEDs where they cross over. So that's what that is. But as we fan out, you can see the X. See it good right there. See the X. So you look all the way over here, and you can see, okay, those trees over there that we're shining on. That's about probably 75, 80 yards away. Go to this one. This one you can see real good. That's about 60 yards away. You can see real good up in that tree. So if there was something up in there uh, that you wanted to find out, maybe a, a possum or a coon or something like that, something you would maybe you need for dinner, you know, you can find it easily without having to get too close. And then up close, real good vision right up here, but the, the tighter the tighter that is, so I'm gonna leave it right there and I'm gonna open it up. So you can see how much difference it makes and you can change this to whatever you need as far as the total distance. That's one of the nice things about this zoom is it's got a, a fluctuating, it's not like either one or the other which is like most flash flashlights. You either have a long beam or a short beam. You don't have the concentration of this. And the only other flashlight that I've ever seen that had that is a Bell & Howell uh, light that I used to have when I was a kid. It had that same kind of thing, but it was not even quali the quality of this. So you can see how good this light is at night. And this is you know, a testament. I mean, it's nice and clear tonight. We got uh, stars in the sky, the moon's almost full. So I imagine if the moon wasn't out, it might be able to give even better scene, but this is just awesome. This is an awesome flashlight. And if you don't have one of these yet, uh, you need to get one because you'll not be disappointed. And then if I hit it one more time, what this does is li limits the intensity of the light. So let's say I wanted to, I don't want to have a real bright light. Say you're trying to sneak up on something. So you can put a, the light on it, but I want to put it on that same tree over there and you can't barely see it over here, same thing. Now you can barely see that tree. Pan it back over this way. You can see it doesn't show quite as much. Now, the last setting on here is the strobe. And this would be handy if you needed to fight off somebody coming at you, right? So this right here, this is the, you know, so a wild strobe, white strobe. And you can see there's a, there's a cat right down there. See its eyes? We're gonna zoom in there. So that's the strobe, all right? So now also it will do an SOS here. So you hit it three times and you know, so if you go slow, it's gonna go through the high intensity, low intensity strobe. But if you do it three times fast, you get an SOS and you can do it in the close. You can do it in the zoom. So you can shoot this up into the sky and if there was an aircraft flying over, they would be able to see this light flashing at them, the SOS. They'd be able to triangulate your position by where the light was coming from. So like I said, this is a awesome survival flashlight. I can't, I can't even think of anything else that could be even comparable to this with all the features that it, have, that it has.
So I hope this has been a, uh, a good uh, example of this flashlight. I hope you use, you can see the review is helpful and I hope you'll go and buy one. Not because of anything that maybe I said, but because it's just a quality product. But I hope you have, if you have any questions, anything you want else you might, I might have missed. I don't know what else I might have missed, but you never know. Put it in the comments and I'll be more than happy to get back with you. But I want to tell you, this is a quality product and I don't put my name on anything that's not quality. And I'll, put, I'll stand by this product any day of the week. And I think Brian would also agree. That absolutely. This is a quality product. Yep, absolutely. Best flashlight I've ever had. I'm telling you. So, if you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe. And if you have not uh, put it on the notifications, go down and ring that notification bell. And when you get down there, select all notifications so you can see we put new videos up. And also, give us a thumbs up. It helps the algorithm to help us go to others that need to see this. But do remember this. This is God's country. Y'all take care. We'll see you next time.